Hi guys, it's Alex from Mono. How's everyone doing? Good, 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 I hope. Some of you may have seen recently that I've been chitter chattering about this brand on my group, on my channel, on my Instagram, told my friends and family about it. <laughs> I'm trying to tell everyone about this brand. Um, so I've reviewed two of their fragrances already, but it's time to do the little thing I like to call a spotlight. So I'm here today to talk to you about the five fragrances that are from DL Roland, a super cool edgy brand from Berlin. I happened to discover his brand a year ago, and I feel like it was serendipitous. I feel like I'm so glad that I met him that day and got to smell his perfumes because here I am. I discovered a brand that was an instant love, an instant surprise and I always say if you're someone like me who's very far along into your fragrance journey, I'm always looking for that something special. I've smelled all the jasmines, I've smelled all the ambers, I've smelled all of the... I don't know, fougeres, let's say. And then sometimes something comes along and it makes your ears prick up and this brand has done it. So. I'm here to talk about it. Before I start, I just want to say there are five fragrances in the line, but David has just released a fifth, a sixth fragrance, which looks like it's part of something new that's happening. It's called Daddy, and I haven't smelled it yet. I hope I get to smell it because I'm so invested in this brand. I'm going to smell everything that they make as long as they exist. That's just, that's just what's happening. Yeah. But at the moment, it's on a limited edition run of 55 bottles, which are signed. So yeah maybe try it out if you i know a lot of you have bought the sample sets and stuff based on my reviews so maybe you can do a little sniff along right now anyway let's begin so the fragrances come in 50 ml bottles i have two of them actually and they are a cobalt blue color i'm trying to think of how i can show you that let me just rack my brain a second there you go see what i mean so they're cobalt blue bottles and look how much i've used already so they're about 100, they are 110 euros for 50 mils. Flower Boy is an extra, it's the only exception and it's a little bit more. He sells travel sprays individually of the fragrances and the best thing is he sells a discovery set for 25 euros which is, you know, we, us perfume lovers, we love a discovery set. But the coolest thing is if you buy the discovery set, you get the price of the discovery set off of a bottle that you choose in future if you want to. The current discovery set has got all six fragrances in it, which I think is a bargain. But for now, I'm going to skim through, well not skim through, I'm going to talk about the fragrances individually. So I'm going to start with Flower Boy, which I'm going to say is my favourite for now. In a minute when I talk about the next one, that one's going to be my favourite. Flower Boy to me was my instant love. Well actually two of them were, but this one more so. This one was the fragrance that David's launch event smelled like. I don't know whether that was intentional or not, but when I went to the launch event, the whole space smelled of this, and I think that just solidified my love for it, really. I was just enveloped in it. It was great. So Flower Boy is essentially a green fragrance. It's David's take on modern masculinity. So Flower Boy is the extra. It says, a beautiful bouquet in a smoky garage. Uh, it's a 30% concentration. I did actually ask David, I said, you know, how comes Flower Boy is an extra and all the others are Eau de Parfums? And he told me that he works within his formulas and some formulas work better when they're stronger. And I understand that. I've seen brands do that before, where they have some Eau de Parfum, some extra, because that particular formula just, it sings better when it's in a stronger concentration. So that's why, if you were wondering. Uh, it says it's, I won't tell you the story, but it's, it's basically about David's uh, ode to modern masculinity. It says, um, it's a sheep floral with woody characteristics that act as an homage to modern masculinity. So this one is Rose Absolute, Marigold, Hinoki, Geranium, Gardenia, Patchouli, Sandalwood, Tar and Tobacco. I've done a full review of this one, but man do I love this. To me it smells like um, green suede. It's, it's a leathery green fragrance and what I'd like to say actually to David, if he's watching this, which I think he probably will, I think green is your forte. Three of the fragrances in this line contain green elements and all of the green elements in each one are different from each other. On top of that, they are greens that I've not smelled before. So he's got three green elements, different ones, none of which I've tried. So I think green should be your thing. Yeah. 
just a bit of rubbish advice there. <laughs> the Flower Boy is wonderful. There's a suediness, there's a powderiness, there's a leafy greenness which is smooth. Um, it's it's not to me masculine or feminine. It's completely unisex, even though it's David's ode to masculinity. It's just very, very different. I've not tried a green fragrance like this before, and I love the name as well. And I think when I met him, he said that he wanted to create a floral with guys in mind, and that's what we have with Flower Boy. So four reviewers on my channel, go and check it out. I'm gonna move on to my other favorite, which is Broken Bouquet. So Broken Bouquet is the next one. This is spectacular. As I said, every time I wear this one, I then say that this one's my favorite. Every time I wear this and spray it, I just get, I'm not gonna spray it on me because I wanna spray the other ones on me. But I've reviewed this one as well. This is David's O2 Modern Femininity. It's essentially a rose perfume and it opens very powdery, but not soft. I know that sounds like a, a contradiction in itself, but it is, it, it's a, a big explosion of high pitched powder. There's a stemmy figgy greenness going on behind as well. There's gourmand notes in this one and there's oud as well, but it's definitely not your typical oud fragrance. The oud is very well done and very well placed. It says here, inspired by modern femininity, I wanted to create a beautiful floral that is not merely a pretty accessory. After years of fighting and manifesting confidence, femininity has a new standing and Broken Bouquet is a symbol of that profound transformation. A spicy, bittersweet floral for bold and curious personalities who embrace change. It's lemon, rose absolute, aldehyde, aldehyde, aldehydic greens, jasmine, violet, spices, burnt caramel, tonka, cedar, and agar wood, which is oud. So every time I smell this, I just, oh, I, I'm filled with so much joy. It's a big fragrance, this one. It will get you noticed. And if you like roses, but you, you like me, have tried so many, this one offers something different, and I really like it. It's so cool because the powderiness in it for me doesn't come from Violet, it comes from somewhere else entirely. So it's very special, this one, and I'm so glad to have it. This is one that I will have multiple bottles of. I will replace this when I finish mine, which is gonna be soon because I've used quite a lot. It's just great. So anyway, I skimmed over those because as I said, I've reviewed both of those in depth. Now I'm gonna talk about the three that I haven't talked about yet. And I think, Going into this, I will say that Broken Bouquet and Flower Boy, for me, are two of the more approachable ones. All of them are edgy, but the next three coming up have something, it kind of pushed a little bit further, I think. So the first one I wanna talk about is called The Door. Now this, let me tell you, this is so cool. I think this is, this is a third one that I would probably want in my collection. The other two, not so much but not for any bad reason. I just like these ones more. So from my memory, when I met David, when I smelled the door, I was very, very surprised by it. This one is about, um, I guess, a little bit of hedonism. There is a really famous nightclub in Berlin called Berghain. And I knew about this before I learned about this fragrance, but as far as I know, it's quite a hedonistic space. There's sometimes very strict dress codes. It's a little bit uh, debaucherous. Sounds like a place that I would really like to go. Might be quite difficult to get in. I think you have to kind of know people. But I remember David telling me that the doormen of this nightclub wear this fragrance. And when I smelled it, I went, whoa. So let me read you a little bit about it. This one I think is the most avant-garde of the bunch, for sure. So it's woody, leathery, musky, and it's a smouldering palo santo with an animalic second skin. Um, let me tell you what he says. Themes of wood, leather, and musks are the structure for the door. The fragrance has a spicy but smoky opening of dried fruits, saffron, and smoky black tea. This combination gives way for a darker, more spiritual, dynamic heart. Burnt palo santo, which is a wood which is usually used for incense um, properties, I think. Uh, Burnt Palo Santo and Latex produce essential energy, whilst Vetiver conveys a softer form of expression that leads to the animalic and leathery second skin in the base notes. So it's dried fruits, saffron, smoky black tea, Burnt Palo Santo, Latex, Vetiver, Balsamic Palo Santo, powdery musks and pheromones. So this is wackadoodle. And this one to me is 
stepping a little bit outside of the realm of perfumery. When I smell this, it's got, um, it's, it's kind of almost like an industrial type feeling. And this one's naughty. This is a naughty, naughty perfume. This is a little bit sinister to me. And at first I can smell smoke and spice, but when it gets into its stride, this is what I think, and don't, don't judge me on this. I feel like if I ever hired a dominatrix, for any kind of reason that I would, I don't know why, I feel like this is what he or she would smell like. It smells like rubber. When it's drying, it's not quite dry yet, but I've tried this a lot of times. It's got this rubber smell that isn't a, a, like a burnt rubber smell that you sometimes smell in fragrances nowadays. It's more plastic sheet, latex, rubbery smell. And it makes me think of naughty things. <laughs> That's all I can say about it, really. No, I can say more, don't worry. I'm not gonna leave it there, leave you hanging. But yeah, this is, this is way out there, and I don't know how he's managed to create this latex accord. I think it's very, very clever. Um, and just as a reference point, I will say to you that if any of you guys have tried um, club design and scent tattoo from a company called The Zoo, they touched on this theme a little bit more, but that one I can't wear. It's, it's way too much for me. But this kind of strange, spicy, smoky latex with a little bit of smoothness and sweetness as well is very unusual. There's a certain type of person that's gonna really like this. And even if you're not gonna like it, it's definitely worth smelling because it's different. It's very, very odd. And it's that odd that I want it in my collection. I don't think I've got anything like this. I've got smoky things. I've got things that smell like burnt rubber but there's nothing that makes me feel like I'm in some sort of BDSM club, clubbing situation. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave that one there. I'm gonna move on to the next one. So the next one is called Ambivalence. And this one, the inspiration for this one is David's trips to Ibiza. And it's kind of double, twofold, let's say. There's the hedonistic side of Ibiza you know, the ganja, the partying, all of that kind of stuff. But then there's also a very serene, beautiful side to Ibiza. I've been there, I kind of know what he's talking about. So it says, a fragrance that is green, spiritual and wild. The green element is produced using top notes of grapefruit, green leaves and cannabis, replicating the spiritual environment of a Mediterranean island. The magic of the island is shared with those who visit and many think of Ibiza as a place of spiritual hedonism. Oh, okay, yeah, I just said hedonism. Yay, points for me. The heart of herbs, hay, immortel, and palo santo replicate this spirituality, finding a way of bringing back the magic to life. Ibiza is also a deeply seductive and sensual environment. It is demonstrated here through the use of animalic musks, oak moss, ambergris, and ambergris as the base notes. So I'm gonna put this one on my hand. This one on me has uh, three very distinct stages, which I'll tell you about. So it's another one that's very edgy. I've said that before. This brand is not about frou-frou. This is not a brand to try if you're just starting out in perfumery because you might be shocked. Or if you wanna just dive straight into a super cool indie brand, go ahead, be my guest. So this opens with a definite feeling of uh, dry leaves uh, and it does lean towards the more cannabis uh, situation, <laughs> shall we say. There's an immediate sweetness as well and a little bit of spice. And it kind of makes me think of carnations in a way. When you have this greenery spice kind of smell that's mixed in with some kind of flowers, you get this illusion of, of carnation with this. But this is kind of like a carnation growing in a cannabis field. It's like one lonely carnation that kind of sprouted up and said, hey, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So like I said, there's green elements in three of his fragrances. You've got the figgy greenness of Broken Bouquet. You've got the leathery suede, unusual greenness of Flower Boy. This is an entirely different greenness again, which is why I say it's his forte, I think. It almost feels a little bit uh, vanillic, and I don't know where that comes from, but there's a dryness to this. You've got quite a few dry notes. You've got Immortel in there, which is a dry, spicy um, kind of, almost a little bit like maple syrup, maybe it's Immortel that's doing it. And 
Hay is a sweet note as well. It's usually coumarin that perfumers use to create that smell of curing hay. So although you've got a dry, spiky, spicy green leafiness, there is also some softer, sweeter notes in there as well. And that's what happens when it dries a bit. This one goes really sweet on me. I think it's the sweetest of the five. And the dry stages, it reverts back to a more gentle kind of carnation. The cannabis part of it, the spiky leafy part goes away and it, it ends up being a little bit more gentle. So if you're a fan of Ibiza, if you smoke the ganja, maybe you'll like this one. <laughs> and we're gonna move on to the last one, which is called Crystal Haze. So let's just undo my sleeve because I need room to spray this one. So Crystal Haze, it's an oriental spicy floral. It says bottled up excitement. It's oriental, spicy, yet floral. It represents those hedonistic nights of youth. You can tell that David's a party goer, right? This is Ibiza, this is partying. We have one based on the club in Berlin, kind of. <laughs> so um, it's uh, hedonistic nights of youth that were euphoric and undefinable. Top notes of tuberose and sweet orange create a creamy sweet opening, preparing your senses for a rush of bright energy. This energy is harnessed through a heart of synthetic fibres and fresh cotton that kick in almost immediately. On the dry down, the base notes of imagined ironed shirt, bitter crystal musks and vanilla give a beautifully unique feeling to this perfume. Crystal haze is when things kick in and the pupils widen. Your senses get a bit hazy and the excitement that comes up reminds you of your youth back when everything was new and therefore exciting. It's fluid and undefinable, a bright and fresh euphoric rush with a magnetic pull. You may never experience it the same way twice. I'm ending on the most difficult one for me personally because this is the one I find the most tricky to describe. So Crystal Haze is very unusual. They all are in their own way, but this one, I have never smelled a fragrance like this before. It's got a the twang. I know that's a really strange word to use, but there is a sweet twang to this one that's kind of citrusy, but not. I don't really smell tuberose in here. And this one to me is the most, I guess it's kind of candy-ish. It's, it's, it's a sweet one that's got a jolt of sourness that doesn't really feel like orange. It says it's orange, but to me, it's like an orange from another planet. It's smooth as well, but it's got this bite on the top of it that is really hard to pinpoint. It's like candy went to the dark side. So if you're one for sweet fragrances as well, this might be a good one to start with, but it re it's really tough. I don't know why I chose this one last. I just did them how I found them. But Crystal Haze, I guess it's about sweet euphoria and things that I'm not gonna talk about, maybe, because it's sensitive subject. But I like, I like perfumers that have themes that are out there and that are, you don't see every day. How many adverts have we seen from people like Giorgio Armani where there's a woman running on a beach into the man's of an, uh, arms of a man? I mean, we're over it. We're over it, people. This is where it's at. So yeah, I find this one really tough. It's, it's kind of, bet the only way I can describe it is it's kind of between syrupy and sharp at the same time. And I don't necessarily smell tuberose in here. I would like to, because it's my favorite flower, but I'm glad that I don't, because then it would make it familiar, and this is not a familiar fragrance by any means. There is a clean streak in there, but it doesn't feel like the gentleness of white musk. It's a synthetic that gives a cleanliness that I've not tried before. This is why I love them. Ah! Yeah, tricky one, guys. You're just gonna have to smell this one, but overall it's it's sweet and also sour and a little bit bitter and also a bit clean. And I don't really know what category it fits in. This is not on the fragrance wheel for me. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna leave it there. That is my spotlight on the fantastic brand from Berlin, David Lucas Roland. I'm gonna link his website below so you can go and read about them yourself. See if you wanna get any of them. I mean, I'm shouting about it because I like them. We've all seen me do spotlights before where it hasn't gone so well. This one's a great one. And my last thing I wanna say is, I know a lot of you guys in Germany watch me. You are now the second highest country that views me. So go and support your local business. You have gotta support independent businesses, especially at this time. Um, yeah, go and check him out. He's doing great things for German perfumery that I have not tried before. So 
Anyway guys, a message to David. Thank you for letting me try your perfumes. Thank you for introducing me to them. I'm finally really excited about a brand. I will be watching you very, very closely, my friend. Anyway guys, stay safe, stay well, enjoy your holidays you know as much as you can we deserve it we deserve to be celebrating something to end this disgusting horrible year anyway guys i love you all i'm out tomorrow trying to make the world smell better one video at a time goodbye